Hey everyone, it's Graphic back with another video, and today we're going to be talking about what you should be doing as an under level 60 player to get to level 60 as fast as possible. A lot of people know that the game really starts when you hit 60, right? So you get the PvP arenas that uh, you can kind of do before 60, but realistically, you're not going to find many games. It's not going to be that competitive. But PvP arena is just one of the many things. So Outpost Rush, a lot of mutated dungeons, dungeons in general, as there's you know continuing to be so many different dungeons. But you want to get started on your PvP track, most likely if you're a PvP player, or if you're level 60, you want to start on your PvE dungeons and mutation runs if you're a pve player so like i said today we're going to kind of try to get you guys involved in getting to that level 60 as fast as possible as you can see here level 23 is at the town board a level 17 also coming to the town board it looks like maybe a 30 coming to the town board this is where low level players level up very very quickly so if we look at the town board this is something they are nerfing as soon as Brimstone Sands update does release. So take full advantage in the next couple of weeks as, like I said, this won't be a really an option or a viable option when Brimstone Sands does kind of come full throttle to us. So, so Town Projects is one, right? That's going to be the main kind of priority over anything else besides maybe the main story. Main story is going to be number two. Main story is always going to be something you're going to want to do as soon as you're able to. So that means if you need better gear, if you need better or you know higher levels, you can do a couple of different things. So if you need higher levels, you're going to come to the town project board, probably maybe some side story quests, whatever you need to do. But when it comes to needing more gold, that's where I'm going to kind of tell you, you need to go get raw materials. So I'm talking about the tier one resources like iron ore, fiber, um, there's so many that you can actually take a look at here on the uh, the trading post. But fiber, stone, iron, rawhide, all of those are all going to be selling for a decent amount. Rawhide's always on the cheaper side, so let's take a look at that first. It's at uh, 0.43, which is not bad at all. Then let's take a look at probably the highest side of the thing, uh, you know, of these raw resources. That's going to be iron ore, sitting at about 0.56 or 0.7. It's kind of sporadic where it goes throughout the day, but it's looking really, really solid to be a very very low level gatherer because you're able to get these nodes as their prices are very, very competitive right now as new and returning players are coming to the game. I do want to say as well, if you got the gold now that you need to kind of buy just a little bit better gear, I wouldn't spend too much on gear before level 60 because when you hit level 60, you're going to want to buy best in slot gear and that costs quite a bit of money. I'm not going to go through, you know, the best in slot gear, but I will go and say, let's go to weapons. Let's go to one handed weapons. Right. And let's search by price. There's a weapon out there, 450,000 gold right now. Obviously, it may not be worth it to you, but it's a very solid weapon. Could be considered best in slot for a lot of people. There's many of these out there. Right. So this one, um, Corrupted Bane, this this is definitely not a uh, a 224,000 gold rapier, but it's up there with um, you know some of these others that are best in slot. So just keep in mind that gold is a big deal later on at level 60. So don't spend too much on pre-level 60 gear as there should be a lot of great cheap options with two perks on them. I also want to talk about some of the big things you should be doing. So uh, what you may not know, by the way, is... Tuning orbs are actually out of the game. Tuning orbs are gone, right? So now there's a find or a group dungeon finder. Let's go to Genesis here, for example. And you can see that you can just search for a regular dungeon right now. Look at that. So there's one. I could apply right now. They have two DPS and it looks like a healer. So they definitely need one more damage and one more tank. And I could easily request to join if I change my PvP flag. So you can see here regular expeditions remaining. You get 25 every single week and it resets every single week. That's 25 regular, 25 mutated dungeons, a total of 50 PvE dungeons that you can do per week. PvE players are going to be busy non-stop if they really want to be so it's very nice to have that pve and pvp side of things now with these some great like i said updates as tuning orbs were not really you know doing what they intended to do uh, but i want to talk a little bit more about leveling so the big thing right now is town boards still number one main story quest obviously is going to be kind of tied with number one because there's some points where you can't do the main story quest and that's going to be when you instantly go over to town boards number two is going to be side story quests and faction missions. So faction missions don't give you a ton of XP, but I would do three faction missions every day at the very least. It's going to give you a bonus, a daily bonus, um, definitely worth doing. 
you can see the daily bonuses here available to you in the top left of the screen, kind of, or top middle, I guess, of the screen. It says daily bonuses available, three of three. It shows your current territory, controlling faction, etc. So that's a way to kind of see if your daily bonuses are back up. And it also has all missions will refresh in the top right, so you know when you can get the new missions. I do want to talk a little bit, though, about the other Option. So there's other things you can do, obviously, to gain XP. One of the cool things that PvP flagging does for you, if we click you right now, it uh, it actually won't tell me, I don't believe. But if I hover over here in the bottom right, it'll tell you exactly what it does. While flagged for PvP, you can attack and be attacked by other PvP flagged players. Successful kills can give you Azoth Salt and PvP XP. You receive 10% XP bonus while flagged. So this is a big bonus. 10% is not bad at all. The one thing, though, that's kind of upsetting about it is you'll probably die quite often just knowing that there's so many other level 60s on any of the servers you're going to be on. So if we take a look around the map, there's going to be some spots that you're probably safe flagging up, but just expect to be killed occasionally. And, you know, it's it's debatable if it's worth it or not, but if you like PvP, if you like the, kind of that scare of uh, maybe I'll live, maybe I won't, well flag up try it out that 10 percent boost might be worth it uh cutlass keys though a place that you might stay alive at first light another one there's not too many 60s running around on some of these zones like restless shores and morningdale they might also just let you go if you're a newbie so that's a 10 percent boost that you can definitely take advantage of as well and do remember guys you're here to have fun right so the big thing is a lot of people are stressing over just getting 60 before brimstone sands with brimstone sands they're actually going to make leveling much easier and much more fun in my opinion i've looked at the ptr as well as kind of read a lot about the leveling experience it's going to be much more intriguing to level in the new update so if you want to wait till the new update that's perfectly fine if you want to get there though and be prepped for brimstone sands the new content that's coming obviously dungeons and more you can definitely get started today so this is just all the information of how to get to level 60 very quickly in this next couple of weeks obviously this is really kind of irrelevant information when it comes past that brimstone sands just because there is going to be a huge new leveling experience and kind of faster ways to level all together but it should be all together faster leveling after brimstone sands is what i'm hearing so thank you guys again for tuning in make sure to like the video subscribe to the channel and turn notifications on the one thing i want to say as well is there is a lot that we're going to be talking about over the next couple of weeks as we get closer to brimstone sands so if you have any questions about what you know certain things you need to learn a little bit more about i guess on new world let me know give me video ideas i'll try to give you guys that information and learn a little bit more about that topic so i can at least give you the best kind of advice possible thank you again i'll see you all in the next one